Daily Rolls, I'm Dominic Stirling. Look, a big day yesterday, Monday, and a bigger few days ahead. Last night, it was very exciting to see our friends Joseph and Vivian Thiem. Joseph become uh, the new senior minister of Cabramatta Anglican Church, and uh, great to be along there to pray for him and Vivian and to cheer them on in that. Yesterday, uh, organization for the whole week to get ready for this big Cultivate conference. Uh, we've got starting today, four days, training the kids and youth leaders of Village Church and other churches across the inner west, looking at 2 Timothy, and so that's what we're doing in Daily Bible Time this week. Um, we finished yesterday with 2 Timothy 1.8. Do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, instead sharing the suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God. Now that's going to mean, of course, sticking your neck out to align yourself with the man Jesus who was executed and risen again and aligning yourself with his other man, Paul, um, who is currently in jail at the time of writing. It's going to be not being ashamed to testify about our Lord Jesus, not being ashamed to back up St. Paul. What could possibly motivate you to do that, both as a first century person or as a member of Village today, to stand relationally, financially, personally with Jesus and Paul? It could only be, verse 9, that you identify as one of the us in verse 9. He has saved us, called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. This has now been made evident through the appearing of our Saviour Christ Jesus, who's abolished death, has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Now, verse 9 is motive. Verse 8 is what you're to do about it. But the motive is actually the most important thing. Because if you get the motive right, then the what you do about it just falls into place. But if you don't get the motive right, well then, you're in a mess. In verse 9, there are some questions that come up. He has saved us. He has called us. So am I part of the us? Am I part of the saved? Am I part of the called? Well, I tell you what it isn't to be saved. It's not about doing good works, verse 9. Not according to our works. That's absolutely crucial. That's a thing that separates biblical Christianity from every other faith in the world. All other faith groups are what you must do, 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 do to make yourself acceptable to the divine. Biblical Christianity is what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. It's not according to our works. It's according to his own purpose and grace. What does that look like? Well, God decided, then God did, according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before time began. Before, before time began, God worked it all out so that we, you, I, we would be part of the saved, so that we would be part, part of the called, if you're part of the us. It wasn't clear at the start how that would work, but it's now been, verse 10, made evident through the appearing of our Saviour Jesus Christ to abolish death, who brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. With the coming of Christ, when Jesus appeared, he destroyed death. Jesus' death meant that the death that I and you were facing, he went through it. We wouldn't have to go through it. Jesus died for us. He paid the price in our place. Now, for us, the group that's part of the us, there's life and immortality. So let's stop and pause and reflect. Am I part of the sentence nine, us? Now, it's not about being baptized. I don't care about that. It's not about growing up religious. That's not the issue. It's not about have I done the religious stuff. That's not the issue. It's deep down in the very core of my being do I know I'm desperate before God. Needy. And he found me. He rescued me. He saved me. Not because of anything you've done, I've done. No, but because of what Jesus did on the cross. But if you're part of the us, if you're part of the saved, then a different life is expected. You are now called to a holy life. You've been called to live differently. You've been called to a not holy in them. Um, the stained glass windows sense, not religious gothic buildings holy, but living differently in the areas that God says matter. And the areas that God says matter to Timothy and actually derivatively to all of us is suffering. We might as well face that now. If we're part of the us, if we're part of the saved, then sentence eight is going to involve standing suffering. And I take it that that suffering will, will play out in testifying for the Lord Jesus, not being ashamed of Paul, his prisoner. In sentence 11 following, he gives a little worked examples because Paul doesn't say, look, you go and suffer over there while I put my feet up at the All Saints Golf Club. He, he, he says, look, I'm doing it. Do as I do. He says, 11, for this gospel, I was appointed a herald, apostle, a teacher. That is why I suffer these things. I am not ashamed. I know the one I've believed in 
and am persuaded that he's able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. What day? Judgment day. On the day of judgment, when all the living and the dead are judged, Paul will be found to be vindicated. Might not be clear right now. Paul looks beaten, defeated, in jail, lonely, struggling. But he knows who he believed. And he knows that on that day he'll be vindicated. So, Timothy, hold on to the pattern of sound teaching in faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard through the Holy Spirit who lives in you the good thing entrusted to you. I've got to guard this good thing, this deposit that we heard from Paul. We've got to guard it. Where does the rubber hit the road? Well, many of the debates for us at the moment um, are on the issue of sexuality. Are we going to guard the gospel on the issue of sexuality? Are we going to stand with Jesus on the issue of sexuality? I mean, there's a there's a challenge. There's a there's a real life issue, and um, there's a temptation to walk away from Paul. There's a temptation to walk away from Jesus, but we need to trust that what Jesus says, what Paul says, is actually for our good. We need to believe that because, I mean, there are people who haven't guarded, who haven't held, and we need to follow the example of Jesus, to follow the example of Paul, to stand with them in 2 Timothy 1. Let me lead us in prayer. Father, we pray that we might do this. We pray we, we pray that um, we thank you for this great gift of being part of the saved, part of the called. Um, thank you it's not by our works, but it's what you you have done in Jesus. And we pray that we would stand with Jesus, stand with Paul, guard the good, good, good deposit, suffer with Jesus, suffer with Paul. And we pray that in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us, Daily Bible Time. This Tuesday.